I do believe we're live. Let's see how long it takes for uh, for anybody to turn up and say hello. We've got nothing yet. I just had an issue with my um, with my internet. Um, it went out. Bright enough? What do you think? Is is that bright enough? Good evening, Paul R. Good evening, bottle digging with Kyle. <clears throat> Six people watching. One thumbs up. That's quick. Mm. Ooh. Ooh. Lee Kerry. Hello, Lee. How are you, sir? Megs. Hello, Megs. Down in sunny Australia there. I hope everybody's well this fine evening or fine morning, whatever it is where you are. Marilyn, hello, Marilyn. I didn't think we were going to see you tonight, but uh, yeah, indeed. The best laid plans of mice and it's snowing, Marilyn. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, gosh. Uh, Megs, yes, very well. Um, yeah, we're all very well at the moment, although Pam is still... Um, Still trying to shake this cold that uh, that she caught off our daughter, but uh, apart from that, she's uh, she's in good form. Yeah, as I say, Carl, she's uh, she's doing okay, just full of a cold at the moment, and has been for for over a week now. And um, um, and before we go any further, as well, I'm going to apologise if the um, if the stream goes down or anything like that, or it starts buffering. Um, I think it might possibly be to do with the weather that we're having here at the moment, as you might have seen in the uh, in the couple of vlogs that I've done there over the last couple of days. Excuse me while I dust my camera here. Uh, the uh, the vlogs of the storm Dennis that we're going through at the moment. It's uh, it's been uh, like this now for uh, oh, going on about forty eight hours. So um, yeah. <clears throat> Tony, finding treasure. A D, how are you? <clears throat> Young Kyle driving. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, just for reference before anybody asks it's a um it's a white russian so uh, i'll let you uh, google that or ask uh, ask friends or family if you want to know what one of those is very nice uh, but only if you're an adult Yeah, Megs, um, it, it really depends on where you are in the country as to how bad the flooding gets. Um, it's usually people, uh, people that suffer most are usually the people that live next to rivers. Um, but it's one of those things. We do get, uh, as you've seen on uh, on my videos, we do get a little bit of flooding in the, um, in the big car park on the front in Helensburgh there. Uh, there was a bit of flooding there yesterday. The sea was coming over the top. Basically, it's it's standard stuff, really. Like I say, anybody that lives by the sea or um, or by a river will be uh, will be affected by flooding. Um, there's no way you can get away from it, really. Unfortunately. And uh, yeah, the video that I put up earlier today is uh, was was literally shot today as well. It. Uh, Finding treasure. Tony says River Air is on high alert. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Wind is, yeah, you're absolutely right, right Cal. The, wheel, the wind is howling out there tonight. It uh, it seems to have been getting stronger through the day, to be perfectly honest with you. Um, when I was out yesterday in the storm, uh, it was it was really strong winds. I was uh, I was getting battered around quite uh, quite uh, often 
in that yesterday, but um, yeah, not too bad. Yeah, Northern Mudlarks, I think they live uh, in uh, Hoik. Uh, it's, it's pronounced H-A-W-I-C-K, Hoik. That's the way you pronounce that, where they live. Uh, two very uh, uh, crafty, creative uh, ladies there as well, I must admit. They, uh, they seem to make uh, magical magical things out of the fines. <laughs> Whereas me, I'm like, drill a hole in a coin, it's a key ring. <laughs> I do what I can, basically, and I enjoy uh, I enjoy messing about. Bear with me two seconds. My phone is next to the computer and it's buzzing away. Let me just get it out of the way. Bear with me two seconds. There we go. <clears throat> Got rid of the buzzing anyway. So, uh, so yeah, that's um, that's been the extent of uh, of my week, uh, getting out to uh, to shoot the storm footage, and um, a few people have asked me, and uh, and yeah, I, I do it because I enjoy doing it. I love being out in uh, in that rough weather, and uh, I made sure uh, yesterday uh, in the first storm video that I did, I made sure I had all my wet gear on, so so I could walk along the seafront and not worry about getting sprayed and. And obviously the uh, the GoPro is um, is waterproof as well, so so that's always a bonus because um, I'd hate to uh, I'd hate to break that and have to buy another one, but uh, but no, it uh, it's waterproof, so it's uh, it's absolutely fantastic, and I can just walk along and get uh, splashed by the waves and and the spray and sea spray and what have you, and uh, and not worry about it, so. Tony taking the little lad out detecting next week when he's off school. Hey, starting when they're young, Tony. That's what uh, that's what they say. Yeah, Carl, you 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 don't you don't really want to take a risk if you're out uh, in the woods and uh, and it's blowing like it is, um, uh, dead branches off trees and that sort of thing. Uh, often uh, in this sort of weather, will come down without any warning and. Uh, you know, at worst, uh, they'll at best they'll miss you, and at worst, uh, you'll get a right thump on the head. So, uh, yeah, better to be safe than sorry. Now then, Dave, fluffy smudge in the house. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah, uh, I'm all dry actually. I'm just out of the bath actually, so uh, so I am actually all dry. <laughs> Tracy, hello. How are you? so um so yeah that's that's yesterday and today were the only times that i've really got out with the camera i must admit um and the uh the only reason i shot the uh the video that i shot today the one that i put up earlier today of the storm and, and a bit of beach combing was um I intended going down the beach. Uh, low tide was at, uh, I believe, if you bear with me, let me see if I can open up a fresh page. Um, let me see if I can take that. Yeah, I can take that one over there. So I believe it was about um, 10 past 11 today. Um, I'll find it here. Bear with me. Boom 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 ba 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 da ba da ba da ba 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 Yeah, well, eighteen minutes past eleven it was supposed to be low tide. And it was supposed to be 0 0.6 meters high, which is which is okay for be for beach detecting here in Helensborough. But um when I got down to uh the uh I actually was gonna go up to Rue uh, and detect on the beach up there because I've not been up there for ages. So uh so I thought, yeah turned out it was nice this morning sunshine uh still windy but uh, i decided oh, i'll go up to rue so i jumped in the car and went off up to rue and uh, when i got there there was literally there was no beach it was just the um it was just the the spit of land out to the um to the lighthouse there and uh i mean it's just there was nothing to to metal detect on so i thought right i've got the camera with me so 
I'll scoot down to Craig and Dora and I'll see if it's uh, low enough there that I can get along the beach. And uh, thankfully it was. Um, and I, uh, and yeah, I decided to uh, have a dander out and a wander along. Saw the uh, the the shipwreck uh, or boat wreck, if you want to call it that, that was uh, that had been caught up in the uh, in the week uh, previous in Storm Kira that had washed up. And um, uh, when it had washed up, the uh, lifeboat uh, people had been down, uh, or the coastal uh, sa safety people had been down, and they removed um, uh, private belongings from the boat. Uh, of the owner so um, so yeah I thought I'd have a wander around there see if there's anything washed up and uh, surprisingly there wasn't a great deal um, as you've seen in the video if you've watched it and, uh, and yeah but it's it's great being out there it's uh, there's something about the power of the wind and the sea and uh, all those things mixed up together really makes it quite a quite an experience let's put it that way <laughs> James 84 says, I noticed you went to school at Hemsworth. Uh, I did indeed, yeah. I went to um, Hemsworth High School, actually. And uh, before that, I went to uh, school in Ackworth because uh, I lived in Ackworth at the time. And, uh, yeah, I went to Ackworth Middle School. And then uh, in the 80s, well, it was, um, I would have been, how old? Uh, 12 stroke 13 when I went to Hemsworth High School. So that would have been about 1983. And uh, and yeah, there you go. <clears throat> Tracy, enjoyed your latest video. Were you not tempted to win stuff? Tracy, I'm not a very good swimmer at all. I've never been a great swimmer. Um, and uh, to swim in that, you wouldn't catch me in a month of Sundays. My daughter, she's she's a pretty good swimmer. And she has swum up and down in the Clyde before now. Um, obviously not on days like today because... Uh, because we wouldn't allow her. Although when we lived in Northern Ireland, she used to go swimming in the sea in uh, in Northern Ireland when she was uh, when she was like uh, six, seven years old, and uh, used to scare the life out of me. Um, but uh, but yeah, I'm not a great swimmer, so I, I uh, generally stay clear of the water. Again, better safe than sorry. <laughs> it does look like great fun though. That does the windsurfing, I must admit. Uh, and the guys that there was, uh, I think there was about six or eight of them out there today, and uh, they were having a whale of a time. Uh, yeah, Kyle, just for your reference, the website I use is tidetimes.co.uk and uh, I just type in Helensborough and uh, it brings me up the Tide Times and it's usually pretty accurate. It's quite a basic uh, site for, for Tide Times, but, uh, but yeah, there you go. Marlene, the only thing that is more daft than going out in that weather is the windsurfers. Yeah, they're, they're a special breed, but, you know, it's windy and, and they need it to, uh, to enjoy their sport. So, uh, I... Uh, a few people in Helensbury were saying that they were concerned um, that the, those guys shouldn't be out there, um, but they are all um, professional, you know, experienced uh, windsurfers. Uh, they've been doing it for many, many years, and they all look after each other, and they've all got um, the right safety equipment and dry suits, that kind of thing. So, uh, so yeah, they all uh, they all look uh, like I say, like they're having an absolute whale of a time. <clears throat> Uh, Kyle says he's hoping to get that broken skittle bottle this week. It's it's still there actually, Kyle. Um, I saw it there today, um, so it should be easy enough to find. If it's uh, if it survived the last forty eight hours, then uh, yeah, it'll uh, it'll still be there. And that's a week in between the two as well, actually, between me finding it the first time and it and it still being there. Yeah, hopefully um, uh, when the tide is a bit lower, uh, there might well be some more bottles washed up. It's uh, again, I found that uh, that newish white and Mackay bottle today, but uh, that wasn't of interest to me, to be perfectly honest with you. It's, it's just there's not enough age in it. James eighty four went to when do you, tell me James when what years were you going to Hemsworth High School? It was an interesting uh, place, and it was an interesting time in the eighties. I must admit. A fluffy smudge Dave says, I think you should start windsurfing and film it. Uh, we wouldn't laugh on it. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> uh, I think I'd be crying rather than laughing, to be honest. <laughs> uh, 
uh, yes, Barry, that's when we lived in uh, in Northern Ireland. I worked at uh, I worked at both the airports there, actually, amongst other things. Oh, let me just have a we sniff there. Oh, that is so good. Mm. Mm. Uh, what else have I been doing this week? Well, um, I think I mentioned last time that I was uh, on the last stream uh, last Sunday that I was going to watch um, The Hound of the Baskervilles starring Basil Rathbone. And, uh, and indeed, I did watch uh, The Hound of the Baskervilles and... Uh, it was absolutely fantastic, and uh, and uh, every night, uh, uh, just about every night this week, I've been watching uh, one of Basil Rathbone's uh, Sherlock Holmes films, and, and I've been having a great time doing it. I absolutely love them. Um, I honestly can say I've, a lot of them I've not seen before, so, um, so yeah, absolutely brilliant. So I watched, um, last Sunday I watched um, Hand of the Baskervilles, and then over the, the last few, uh, the, the rest of the week I've watched, what else have I watched? Um, uh, the Adventures of Sherlock Holmes, um, uh, The Woman in Green, um, uh, The Voice of Terror. I nearly, I nearly put that middle finger up there. <laughs> End of its <laughs> um, so, uh, so yeah, so I've been working my way through and just watching them at, at random. Uh, and like I say, uh, they're absolutely brilliant. I, I, I love them. Um, takes me right back to when I was a kid. So... <laughs> So yeah, Southern Searcher. Hello, how are you? <clears throat> well, I'll tell you what. If this if this is a pub, am I the only person having a drink here? Michael Swan sixty six in California. Well, welcome along, Michael Swan sixty six in California. I hope your weather is a bit nicer than it is here at the moment. I can't show you because it's pitch black, but it's blowing a gale and it's pouring down with rain. And we're in the middle of Storm Dennis, or halfway through, or nearing the end of Storm Dennis anyway. Dave's on hot vim <laughs> Oh, dear. Uh, Southern Searcher um, asks, have I done any uh, beach detecting? I was just saying earlier, um, today was the first chance that I've really had to get out on the beach. Uh, the tides, uh, the low tides have been very early in the morning, but it's been raining here all week. And um, and I went down to uh, to detect. It was supposed to be 0 0.6 metres high, which is a reasonable low tide for us here. Um, but um, the the storm surge has just pushed all the water right up, so there was nothing to detect. I couldn't um, couldn't get on the beach to detect anything. But uh, from looking at the um, from the beach at the uh, at the promenade wall, um, yes, it does seem to have pushed all the sand right up against the wall. The sand and the and the small rocks and stones and what I'm sh you know shingle type stuff, it's pushed it all up against the sea wall. So. Um, so you never know. Once I get a chance to get out on that beach, if it uh, if it stops raining and, and the wind stops blowing, then uh, we might find something. You never know. This this beach here in Helensbury is um, is uh, essentially it's clay and then it's it's covered with sand and it's quite a, a, a low covering, a small thin covering of sand. So hopefully that's probably all washed up and any other fi any finds generally tend to be sat right on top of the clay. So. Um, so you never know with any luck we might find something when I eventually get out there. Marilyn's got a bottle of Bellhaven. Hey. No wrong with that. Bottle Dinky Carl, when do you think it will last? I heard it was going to last till tomorrow. Uh with the way it sounds at the moment, Carl, probably right. Uh, I would imagine it will probably die off tomorrow, hopefully. Southern Search. I'm doing the beach tomorrow, so hoping it's stripped it back a bit. Yeah, good luck. Um, I hope it has, and I hope you get some decent finds. It's one of those tough ones. Last couple of times when I um, when I've tried to get out, um, <laughs> the last time I I, uh, I got the tide time completely wrong, and uh, 
and I found myself with uh, again with no beach to detect. So, um, <clears throat> and then I, I tried the following day and uh, I had a search round and really didn't find a lot to be perfectly honest with you. So, hence there was no video on that. But uh, it's one of those things, you know, if you don't know, you don't, if you don't try, you don't know. Uh, but, uh, but yeah. Uh, young Carl says the tide was so high today at Rue Marina. The water was right over the marina. What well, I'm not surprised, Carl. Yeah, um, by by all accounts, it was starting to flood down in the car park in Helensburgh again today. So, uh... <clears throat> yeah, Tony, I, I think uh, I think everybody's hoping it settles down tomorrow. So. Uh... Hey, so the searcher, it's all right for some. Yeah, I, um, I initially found um, a fair few um, pre-decimal coins on, on the beach here in Helensburgh when I first started detecting, but uh, they've become few and far between now, and, and uh, silver's something that I've not found on the beach yet. Um, Cupro nickel, um, things like two shillings or half crowns, I've found those before, but, uh, but no actual silver, unfortunately, as of yet. And I've still to meet up with Simon, um, we were going to go detecting over this weekend, but the storm really put paid to that. I mean, you, we were supposed to go on uh, <clears throat> yesterday. We was I was uh, we were going to arrange to have a beach detecting session yesterday, but uh, no, it was uh, it was absolutely dreadful. Oh, well, again, as you might have seen in the video, it was absolutely dreadful. So, uh, so we knocked it on the head until the storm wears off, and uh, we'll see. Hopefully, in the next couple of days, it might. Uh, it should just wear off and, and we can get up and get to uh, get a bit of a search going on michael swan lucky out this way we have live beach cams to check the beaches before you go save loads in gas yeah it would be handy to have wouldn't it in fact i've never even looked i don't think i'm certain there isn't uh i'm certain there isn't a uh, uh, a webcam for Helensborough beach there should be it would be nice if there was <laughs> uh Let's see. Ooh. Live webcam Helensboro Beach. Uh, webcams Helensboro Sailing Club. Oh, okay. Excuse me, scratching my ear. Uh, oh, fully enough, there is a live webcam for Helensboro Sailing Club. Uh, is that the Helensborough Sailing Club? Uh, West from the clubhouse. Do, do, do. Camera and weather station location. Do, 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 do. Webcam supplied by Odyssey Trident House, Renfrew Road, Paisley. Yeah, that must be the one. Uh, 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 Google me where it's located. Yeah, indeed. Well, I'll have to bookmark that one. There you go. I've learned something new today. I'll have to bookmark that now. <clears throat> right. That's that one saved. Never even thought of that. <laughs> Let's see if there's another one. Helensborough Region Live. Webcams and weather. Uh, Glasgow, 20, 21 miles away. Uh, River Teeth and Calendar, 25 miles away. Yeah, no, that's uh, I think that's the only one. I think there's one in uh, Gaelock Head, which is just up the water from us here. Webcam Gaelock Head. Uh, yeah, no, that's a static camera, that. It only takes photos, the one in Gaelock Head. So anyway, there you go. I learned something new. yeah i don't understand why uh, people still park there either kyle especially when there's a big sign saying that uh, high tides are imminent and uh, that the car park and that it's at risk of flooding in the car park but people still seem to just drive right past that sign and ignore it so Hello, Mr. Chicken Eater. Oh. 
All right, Tony. Yeah, stay safe, mate. See you on the next one, buddy. So yeah, so um, so that's been about the extent of my week, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. Down into Helens, we're doing a little bit of shopping here and there, and um, yeah, yeah, that's about it. No, Marilyn, I didn't actually. Let me um, let me just have a quick look here now. Uh, so it's the superstitions, isn't it? Uh, superstitions Puma. Hmm. I've got athletics here. <laughs> Pele. Uh, oh, I'm not, I'm not seeing it here. Uh, Superstitions Mountains. Mountains Cougar Shadow. There you go. Superstition Mountains Cougar Shadow. I've got it in here now. Let's have a look. Oh, wow. Yes. That's amazing. Well, that is that is quite remarkable, Marilyn. I, I am thoroughly gobsmacked. <laughs> that is... That's amazing. Um, if anybody doesn't know... Um, uh, Marilyn here is um, is uh, moving house at the moment, and she's moving to um, to a new place, uh, Apache Junction, they call it in uh, in Arizona, and uh, she's close to uh, what's called the Superstition Mountains. And she was telling me um, she emailed me about this, and she said that um, uh, the uh, mountain range that's uh, just behind her home, her new home, um, at certain times of the year has a shadow that looks like a puma chasing its prey. And uh, and yeah, if you um, if you Google Superstition Mountains Cougar, um, you'll see a photograph and it is it's remarkable. I, I mean, that's uh, it's just amazing. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> is, is somebody losing uh, losing the live stream? Uh, big up to uh, uh, the people in South Wales who are getting it rough at the moment. That care of Relentless there. Relentless 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Tell me, how did you come up with that name? Relentless 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. That's an interesting choice of name. Yeah, Marilyn, I could imagine there's all sorts of uh, lore and, and history surrounding that um, for that very reason. Um, because that's just... Uh, uh, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Lee Carey, highlight of my week was Mrs. Winslow's bottle was later nicknamed the baby killer for the high amounts of morphine in it. Oh, dear. Oh, dearie me. It's amazing what they used to give children back then. Young Carl's back, uh, buffering a bit. Yeah, it, it could be to do with the weather, to be perfectly honest with you. Like I say, when I was I was about to come live tonight um, at, uh, at just bang on nine o'clock, and as soon as I hit go live, then it uh, the uh, the internet just crashed here, so I had to wait for that to reboot and uh, and try again. Steve Diamond, hello, sir. How are you? Excuse me. Mm. 
Michael Swan says, <clears throat> I've always wanted to go looking for the lost Dutchman's mine in the Superstitions Mountains. Ooh, it's it sounding better and better by the minute, this place. <laughs> hey, I wish I could move there, to be honest with you. It looks amazing. Uh, let's see. Let's see if we can get some history on the lost Dutchman's mine now i'm going to hazard a guess that the the lost dutchman uh, and his mine was probably in the uh, in the gold uh, in the gold um, craze era uh, let's lost dutchman's mine oh there's a map <gasps> oh lost dutchman's mine found lost dutchman's mine let's go to wikipedia see what that tells us the Lost Dutchman's Gold Mine, also known by similar names, is, according to legend, a rich gold mine hidden in the southwestern United States. The location is generally believed to be in the Superstition Mountains near Apache Junction, east of Phoenix, Arizona. There have been many stories about how to find the mine, and each year people search for the mine. Some have died on the search. <gasps> the mine is named after German immigrant Jacob Waltz. Uh, circa 1810 to 1891 who purportedly discovered it in the 19th century and kept its location a secret before the unification of Germany the demonym Dutch was used for people from the Netherlands and Germans alike the lost Dutchman is perhaps the most famous lost mine in American history so on and so forth have a good read that's beginning to sound more and more exciting by the moment. Searching for lost gold mines. Although I don't fancy the bit about dying while in search of it. That that doesn't thrill me at all. And I'll be honest, I've seen some of the uh, some of the guys that um, that put videos on YouTube where they uh, where they venture down the old um, the old gold mines. And yeah, again, that's uh, that doesn't appeal to me in the slightest, unfortunately. <laughs> So those guys can keep that. <laughs> but yeah, hey, Marilyn, it looks like an amazing place where you're moving to. It really does. I'll have to have another read of that later. Tracy Roberts, my best find this week was to come home from a week away and have no flood. That's always a bonus, Tracy. Uh, Marilyn, the train starts up at Tortilla Flats. Tortilla Flats. Now, look, give me all these names and it, it sounds better and better by the moment. Let's look up Tortilla Flats. Oh, not Yortia. Tortilla Flats. Tortilla Flats, 1935, is an early John Steinbeck novel. Okay, that's not what we're looking for. Uh, it's a John, John Steinbeck novel, apparently. Um, oh, there's some TripAdvisor links to uh, restaurant reviews and hotels there. So uh, anyway, yeah, it looks amazing, Marilyn. You're very lucky. <clears throat> Old Spanish man. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Marilyn, big ass diamondback rattlesnakes. Yeah, we've. We, uh, I don't know if anybody knows. Um, I've probably mentioned them before. We, we, my daughter has two snakes. She has um, uh, a Western hog-nosed snake uh, called Noel because we got him at Christmas, and um, she has a a corn snake called Honey because her, her, her belly, her underside looks like uh, looks like honey. So, uh, yeah. I'm not sure I'd want a rattlesnake, though, to be perfectly honest with you. At least of all the diamondback rattlesnake. <clears throat> yeah, Marilyn, all in all, it looks like an amazing place. It really does. Uh, like I say, you're very lucky. I know um, I, I'm, I feel blessed to, to live where we live here. Um, 
I was driving back from uh, Dumbarton there a few days ago. Uh, I went to get uh, just a bit of shopping and uh, was driving back and I could see the mountains in the distance, the Araka, the Araka mountains there and uh, they were snow capped and it, it was just it was just a beautiful sight to be able to you know drive uh, have that as a view as you're driving home. I, I, like I say, I, I think we're really lucky to uh, to live where we live and uh, and uh, Marilyn, you're really lucky to be able to be moving where you're moving to as well. It, it, like I say, it looks amazing. Michael Swan says, look up the Peralta stones, believed to be an old stone map to the location of the lost mine. Oh, look now, you see, look. <clears throat> Peralta stones. It, tell me, these, these are probably markings on stones. Yeah, look. Yeah, okay. The Peralta stones are a set of engraved stones. Some people believe they indicate the location of the famed lost Dutchman's gold mine in Arizona. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. The stones are named for the Peralta family, said to be an old and powerful Mexican family. Ay, ay, ay. <clears throat> they do look uh, like fascinating pieces of history, actually. Um, albeit uh, quite the treasure map. Fascinating. Again, that's something else I'm going to have to read through now. <laughs> Thanks for that, Michael. <laughs> uh, Relentless. Could, could not think of a username, then seen a can of Relentless. Ta-da. <laughs> Very good. <clears throat> Tracy says, if anyone is down in the southwest anytime, check out Lyme Regis Beach. Bottles and glass and relics. Sprays now then. How are you? You don't need to apologize for being late. Just don't do it again. <laughs> no, where's Lyme Regis? Lyme Regis is uh, south of England, I think, isn't it? Lyme Regis. <laughs> Oh, town in England, Lyme Regis. Yeah, I think that's a bit far for me, uh, Tracy, to be perfectly honest with you. Kyle, I think it's, well, I mean, uh, you know, I'm just saying. Uh, uh, <clears throat> it's a bit far to go for uh, for a beachcomb for me. <laughs> it's on the south coast of England, um, Kyle, down near... Uh, uh, Exeter, Weymouth, Weymouth, Bournemouth, Portsmouth, down that way. A long way away. <clears throat> hey, thank you, Michael. Uh, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Um, that's what we're here for, basically, is... Uh, this Sunday night thing is just a bit of fun, to be perfectly honest with you. To, uh, if you've any questions that you want to ask me about anything that I do, then uh, then ask away. Um, I'll always uh, try and answer them if I can. <clears throat> yeah, no, you're absolutely right, Tracy. Yeah, if anybody is in that area, by all means, then uh, yeah, it's always great to uh, share information about locations. <clears throat> Oh, my throat's getting very dry. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get a little snack. So uh, behave yourselves just for two minutes while I get a quick snack. I might... Uh... No, I'm not going to top my drink up just yet. But I'm going to get a little snack. One of my little favourites. And if you behave yourself, I might let you have one. So hang on two seconds.
I'm back. <laughs> right, so uh, some of you people in England will know what uh, what this snack is, and uh, this is a traditional pub snack. And I know Marilyn was uh, was saying that it's like a like it's like a pub gathering. Uh, when I do these live streams. So I thought I'd have a, a little traditional English pub snack tonight. And uh, yeah. Pork scratchings. Now, if anybody doesn't know what pork scratchings are, let me see if, uh, if I can read the blurb on the back. I got new glasses the other week and I'm still not using them. These are uh, These are the Snaffling Pig Company. What happened to the diet, Megs? Yeah, in <laughs> I am still trying. I'm still trying. That's all I'm going to say. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, I'll tell you what. I'll just tell you what it is. Basically, they're uh, lumps of um, pig skin that's been um, cooked. And usually, as it says, salted, perfectly salted. Oh, listen to that crunch. Oh, mm. And sometimes when you get the right one, it has this, it has this stuff here. This is, this is like fat. Mm. So it's kind of like it's, it's, it, it's kind of dried out fat. Oh, uh, mmm. So again, this stuff. Um, usually, if if you cook a pork, a piece of pork, at Marilyn call it, they call them pork scratchers. Yep. If um, if you cook a piece of pork and and you, and you have the skin on the pork. When that goes crispy, we in here in England we call that crackling, and that's probably my favourite piece of pork is that piece of skin, and that's essentially what these are. It's pieces of skin with the fat still. Look at that, with the fat still on it, and they go great with a beer or a drink, and it's just oh, they're like heaven. Mmm. Mmm. So excuse me, I'm going to uh, I'm going to sit here and enjoy these while I'm uh, while I'm trying to chat away to you guys. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Marilyn says a whole pig over a barbecue is the best. Cut them straight off. Oh, oh, you're making my mouth water, Marilyn. Oh. I'll have to have another pork scratching. Look at that beast. Look at that. And that's all just... Mmm. Mm. That's all just fat. You shouldn't eat these. These are really bad for you. But I'm going to get some exercise tomorrow to burn these off. So. Oh. Mmm. 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 Mm. Uh, Relentless. Ask what got you into bottle digging. Do you get the same buzz from as when you first started? Okay, so um, <clears throat> years ago, before I um, before I started um, uh, YouTubing uh, properly, like I do now, I um, I didn't. Uh, I didn't do anything really. I, I lived in Northern Ireland, and um, it's not really a place where you can sort of go bottle digging or anything like that. If you're caught digging in a field where you shouldn't be in in, uh, in Northern Ireland, you get into a lot of trouble uh, for obvious reasons. But um, I had an interest in bottle over in England, and I, I developed a. a an interest in it. I loved seeing what was being dug up. 
when we moved to Scotland about five, five, six years ago, I um, I started beach combing, started making my videos, putting them online on YouTube, and um, I was invited on a dig, a bottle dig. And I thought, fantastic, we'll, we'll give this a, sh a shot. And uh, I went down and uh, had a go and <clears throat> found my uh, first cod bottle. And uh, I was hooked from then. And uh, I love I love every second of bottle digging. Unfortunately, um, I had an issue with uh, with somebody that I was uh, digging with. And um, and I don't dig with that person anymore. I I, I, um, I literally uh, just I just gave it in, gave up one day. I I, I had no more interest in. Um, in bottle digging uh, because the, the fun of it had been spoiled for me um, but uh, as I've told these guys um, I, these guys keep asking me as well um, <laughs> sorry I'm just reading some of the comments um, when I'm going to start bottle digging again and um, I have a, a metal detecting permission on a local farm it's 500 acres um, but there is a dump right next to the farm. I have a, a metal detecting permission on a local farm. It's 500 acres. Um, but there is a dump right next to the farmhouse. And I've, I've got permission to have a dig in there as well. So uh, so uh, at some point, hopefully, when the weather just gets a little bit uh, drier, I'm going to have a crack at uh, digging into the dump and see if there aren't some bottles inside there. Um, I do love it. I do genuinely enjoy um, not only the, the, uh, the hard work that you have to put in digging, to find the bottles but but that uh that uh excitement of uh, coming across a bottle and digging it out and finding out what it is um i love all that and the history of the bottle as well uh, i love every second of it um it's just that i had my love for it spoiled unfortunately uh so i've not done it for uh yeah so there you go hope that's answered that question for you really marlin i, I we have just a pure love for them mm. um no i don't think um so you've uh, you might have seen some um but there are also um, some poison bottles shaped like bottles it's all about shape uh which uh, denotes rarity uh, right in the middle of parks can't dig them yeah, that's a shame michael here in the uk um the victorians were very good they would um, they would have these dumps in in specific areas but once the dump were once they'd finished dumping on, on an area they would cap it and then they put a layer of fast down or put grass seed down and turn the area into um play, what they call playing fields um so there'll be um things like football pitches and rugby pitches and cricket pitches that kind of I, um, um, but when something gets tainted, when <laughs> and uh, no, Meg, there's no snow here at the moment, unfortunately. What was on the hills on the mountains behind us is, is just about all gone. Yeah, guys, uh, it seems like I'm buffering a lot and uh, I'm breaking up. My apologies. Sprays, yeah, it's still blowing a gale out. Well, like I say, Kyle, I think the uh, I think the rarest shape of poison bottle is uh, submarine, uh, po uh, but some of the school poisons as well are, uh, are very rare as well. Yeah, if you Google submarine poison bottle and look at images, Kyle, you'll you'll see uh, you'll see the ones that I'm talking about. Oh yeah, now I'm getting warnings that my uh, that my stable is my connection is unstable. So um, I'll tell you what, guys. Uh, with that, I am going to love you and leave you.
Oh, Steve says a wasp poison, 9,000 pounds. Well, there you go. What's a wasp? <clears throat> All right, yeah, I can see that. Mm. Yeah, goodbye, Kyle. All right, boys and girls, I'm going to give it five more minutes and then I'm going to sign off for this evening um, because the... Uh, the this, um, this And bye for now.